when in one of my last videos I mentioned that anything can happen it's uh it's an older car it's old technology and who knows what's gonna happen next well no sooner I said that uh something happened the uh the temperature went up above 75 and I noticed that every time it goes above 75 into the 80s it uh it starts to run a lot warmer than I care for it to be so I checked the uh the gauge and the gauge was almost at the hot you know the gauge in the car and so I came out here and and I used this infrared temperature digital temperature reader and all around this area it was around 200 degrees 203 you know the water pump the the heads in the front and I don't like it at that temperature uh and that's and that's just you know uh as soon as I get stuck in a little traffic and I'm idling the temperature starts to go up and then it refuses to go down even if I hit the highway so I I am thinking that the radiator is clogged because this is the original radiator I repaired this maybe eight years ago I soldered it back together because it was leaking on both ends but it still gave me a problem with the 273 and uh, I decided to use it here because I thought maybe there was something wrong with the engine, but as it turns out, I'm thinking it's the radiator. Maybe too small, but again, it had the issue with the 273. So I decided to do something about it. Came through. Here it is. The Champion Radiator. This is made for the small block. Uh, Three, what is it? 318, 340, 360, 273, I believe 360, maybe not. But here it is. It's a, it's a Champion model number CC6769, three row core, Pro Series, aluminum, made by Champion. Um, it has the, uh, the hoses on the, um, on the proper side. So, I mean, it's made for a body. So, and it looks like, it looks like everything's in the right places. All the mounting brackets are there. Looks like, looks like it's going to fit. So, anyway, we'll find out when I start the installation. And, um, yeah, let's get started. The oil change, we're going to do this with one hand. to go up that high because I'm only going to be working in this area here so just got to have enough
cool. All right, let me get some tools. Traction works. So you guys know I have to zip tie this stuff in place because I can't hold it and open it up at all at once. I have to do one thing at a time. I'm working with one hand here. So let's uh, let's hope this works. Hope it doesn't leak all over the place. All right, let me get up top. See what it looks like. Where is it? Huh. I don't see it from here. Guess I'll have to feel for it. Well, let me try. By feel. I hope I didn't put it too tight. Mm. No, nope, I'm gonna have to use some pliers. All right. I opened it. Is it working? Yeah. See, righty tighty. Oh yeah, I see it flowing. I'm just gonna do it nice and slow. I don't make a mess here. I, I believe the last time I drained it, I was able to get two and a half gallons. So I have three gallon cans here, containers. And this time I can actually see what it's filling up when it's almost at the top so I can shut it, shut the valve off and um, swap out the can. Cool. Almost at the top. gonna spill some because I have the transfer. There we go. <clears throat> All right, that's one gallon. All right, let's wait for that one. I got it off. It wasn't too bad. Didn't give me too much of a of a hassle um, but I did discover that this is actually a three roll and this is the stock radiator that came with this car see I did all the repairs here this was many years ago and uh, I got it working I'm hoping that this thing is just clogged because that champion that I uh, that I purchased is also a three roll and honestly I think this one's better but there's something wrong with it. So also, if you look at, if you look at this cheap Chinese piece, I mean, I, I can't say that it's cheap. It, it looks good, but there are some accessories on here that I'm just not, I'm not happy with. I mean, look at this. This doesn't work. <laughs> it just spins. You see that right there? It's just spinning right on the edge of that shaft there. It does nothing. So I'm gonna have to replace this with a stock one. Hopefully it fits. And then this cap, listen to that. It's just cheesy. So I'm gonna be using the stock style radiator cap on that. And then this here, I'm gonna, I don't know. This, this gets threaded in, but it feels so loose. So I may have to put some, um, uh, 
what do you call it, the Teflon. I'm gonna have to put some Teflon on here to get that not to leak. But other than that, I mean, it's a pretty piece. I'm hoping that it works. And, and, and this doesn't line up right, but I'll get that to work somehow. I can't use the stock screws that go on here because it's, it's, it's a little different design. The, uh, the mounting holes on this, if you can see that, it's a little raised. So it actually goes up in here. See the way this is designed here? So it goes in there. This is just flat. So I have to figure out what bolts I'm going to use and if that's going to work so but i think i am done for today i'll come back out here tomorrow morning and uh get a fresh start so we'll see you in the morning oh actually for you it'll be about a second or two it's about uh two in the afternoon yes i slept in a little but uh I came down here and uh, I, uh, I removed these fittings from the old radiator. Th this, the new one didn't come with any. And uh, I'm just going to use a little Teflon tape on the threads. Snug these down really nice. And then this is the old valve that, uh, that was on the, the old radiator. I, I'm going to use this one because I don't trust the one that came with it. It, it was already broken. And... I'm not willing to, to repair it. We'll just put this one in here and it'll last another 55 years or so. So that's good enough. All right, so this is all cleaned up over here. I did remove, I had an electric fan here that I installed many years ago. It was to help with the, uh, with cooling the, uh, the AC because the, the, the original air conditioner that was in here Work great, but as soon as you were stuck in traffic, it, it would start to warm up. So I had this electric fan here installed here. And uh, it would come on and, you know, it'll help a little. Not a whole lot, but it worked. That's not needed anymore. And so if... If this does the job then we'll leave everything as is i am still planning on putting this uh where is it this spacer in there to get the uh the fan just a little closer to the radiator hopefully without damaging it but we'll see when i put this in um all right let me uh let me get started i don't want to make this too long of a video so i'm just going to go ahead and wrap these in teflon tape and install these maybe i'll get a little mother's polish and, and polish this up before i throw it in there so i'll be back in a minute i have a little teflon on here hopefully this will not leak I don't want to over tighten this either. Don't want to break anything. <sighs> oh, I think that's tight enough. Should be good.
That should be good. All right. Let's get this baby on there. I'm not going to put a new spacer in here because that requires me looking for longer bolts, at least an inch and a half, and I do not have them. I do have threaded rod here, this stainless steel that fits, but I would have to cut that and find nuts and washers and lock washers, and, and that's just a lot of work. So what I ended up doing is I ended up test fitting it. It's exactly the same size as the one that came out. It, it's, it has a, the same distance. So I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed that the old one in here is clogged. And if anything, I think we lost about 10 pounds here. This thing is really light. Not only did we lose 10 pounds here, but we lost another four to five pounds with this electric fan that I had installed here many years ago to help out with the uh with the ac but that's not needed right now so i'm gonna go ahead and uh and put this in there so what i ended up doing is drilling new new holes on here because the the slotted ones they had on there didn't match up it, it they, they they just weren't lined up correctly so uh, if I can find my drill, uh, where is oh, here it is. Pull these back out, and uh, I'm just gonna add a flat washer to these, and not tighten them too much because they do bottom out, but they just fit. These are stainless steel screws, and let me show you. new ones the new hose there they are see here is about a quarter inch off this one's about a half inch off this is about a half inch off and that may be about 316 so these were all wrong if I were to try to get them in here I could screw them in anyway uh, the factory screws didn't fit and it was touching here so it wouldn't allow me to bring it up far enough so I just dropped it down a little drill new holes and put my own screws in it that should work keeping my fingers crossed uh, let's see if we can get this in Clean off these metal shavings. That's a test fit. I already have the two bolts in the bottom. It's supposed to slide right in place. If it's the correct size. All right, I see that one's in, and that one's not. So back up. Oh, that's not gonna make it. Uh, no. So, okay. okay, I got it. All right, let's see. Yep. And one more. Uh oh. Uh oh. And there it goes. All right, let me set up a ratchet and uh, try to get this bolt on here and figure out what I forgot. Yep, I have to remove it to put the shroud in place, but it's okay. I got it back in. 
the two bottom bolts are tight. It's just a matter of tightening these here. nice and snug it does fit nicely I'm hoping that it works back in place. I'm not sure. I'll get it in there somehow. Um, all right. So, all right. So when it comes to the transmission lines, the one on the passenger side seems to line up pretty good. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then the one on the driver's side is off by about the two inches. Remember I said that one was 10 inches apart and the other one is 12 inch well this is the 12 inch but it seems to be just the uh driver's side that's off so that one needs to be uh you know bent back in place all right so there is okay here it is now this goes around here and in here that's pretty nice all right folks let me finish up what i'm doing here and i'll be right back everything's in place well as far as the the radiator and the uh the shroud it's nice and tight the only thing i don't like is now i have a gap here so i'm gonna have to figure this one out maybe stuff a little foam in there or something and then uh what else oh i polished it a little i used this stuff here I, I don't know where this came from i don't remember buying this but it's blue magic metal polish you shake it spray it wipe it down it looks pretty good but i really don't like it because you know you become a slave to this if you want to keep it looking like that and so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dull this out a little bit because it's too shiny. And I don't want that, that radiator hose to slip off. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a rough edge so that it can stick. All right, and then I'll go at the bottom and do the same thing to the lower hose. I still need to connect the lines, the transmission line and the bottom radiator hose. And then we're gonna fill her up and hope for the best. So stay tuned. Oh, and if you're wondering where this clamp comes from, <laughs> it's not an original clamp, but it is an original clamp to a 1998 Acura TL 3.2 yep fits in there nicely all right folks let me let me get this done and then we'll fill it and start her up see what happens place everything is tight hopefully I already put one gallon in here I have the one gallon left over but before I put that in I think I'm gonna add another product from Rizlone. This is a hypercool super coolant reduces. Hold on, I can't see. Reduces engine temperature, prevents overheating, provides maximum corrosion protection. Uh, why not? Another Walmart product. Well, 
I found it at Walmart. So listen, I, at this point, I'm willing to try anything. So this is going in. Let's open it up. Okay, here it goes. Looks like regular antifreeze to me. Maybe a little darker, a little brighter. <laughs> I didn't even read to see how much I'm supposed to put in there. <laughs> oh well, I guess it'll run super cool. So basically, this car overheated years ago when I first got it. I went about 100 miles from home and I got stuck in some traffic in the summertime and it overheated. I ended up pulling over. It took me three hours with no tools. Some guy saw me at a gas station and uh, he brought over a, a pair of grip pliers, a hammer, a flathead screwdriver and that's what I used what I ended up doing was removing the uh, the thermostat and he gave me a few gallons of water and there was a um, it was an auto parts about a mile away and so I took a cab and picked this part up here because I couldn't get it to bleed out you know, to, I couldn't burp, burp the system, but um, I added this to it and it worked out. So now what I discovered is that so long as I have this holes higher than everything else, including the radiator, and I fill it, as soon as I see, see it rise to the top here, then I know the whole system has, has antifreeze in it and it burped itself. And that's the way it's always worked. So let's go for it. Ugh. Oh, that's making a mess. I don't like that. Let's see. What if I get it? Nah. Damn it, man. All right, I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna poke a hole on here, put this cap back on. I don't wanna make a mess. I already need to clean this place up. There's a mess under here. All right, let me, uh, let me get this done. Let me figure this out. I don't wanna make a mess here. I already did. Ow, that hurt. All right, let me get this done and I'll be right back. Up. It's off the jack stands. Wish me luck. So I'm going to start it and take it out immediately because if I don't, I'll suffocate in here. Oh yeah!
let's see how she acts. guys I'm gonna let it come up the temperature and I'll turn the camera back on it's halfway up I did turn on the heat put it on hot Give it about five to ten minutes, see what she does. Okay, so the temperature's been holding right in the middle, right where it's supposed to be. I've been sitting out here ten minutes, it's running on idle, the heater is on, and it hasn't changed. I'm gonna say that's pretty good, but I won't know for sure until I take it for a drive when the temperature rises. It's only about, I don't know, 64, 65 degrees out here. So it's not, it's not hot enough. You know, like I said, usually it, it, it does that when it's above 75 into the 80s and higher 80 so yeah, it's not even summer yet so i want to make sure that this thing is okay all right so that's going to conclude this video for now we will pick this up maybe for for when the temperature comes up we'll take it for a test drive and see see how it goes all right thanks for watching guys and girls and we'll see you in the next video.